Okay, so today let's talk about the junction junction field effect transistor, aka JFET. So on the left here, I draw a very simple uh, circuit with the uh, JFET. And it's mainly to show uh, basically the drain, the source, and the gate. So you have three uh, three pins on that JFET. So the this one is the drain. This one is the drain. That's the one you connect to your positive supply. And this is a N, N, N channel. N channel JFET. If you use a P channel, uh, you would switch over the, you would switch the drain and the source uh, and the gate voltage is reversed. But here I'm just going to talk about the N, N channel JFET just to make it easier. So this is your drain. So that's the one on the top connected to the positive supply. Which, which we call VDD, D because of drain. And we put a resistor in the path. Uh, then on the other side, we have the what's called the source. You may wonder why it's called drain source and it seems to be going uh, in the wrong direction. Well, basically it's because of that um, positive direction for the current because of Ben Franklin, basically. The electron go from bottom from bottom to top, so the electrons, the electrons go this way, from bottom to top. But the uh, the convention for the positive current is the other way. So the current goes from drain to source, which is kind of odd. But anyway, so you have the drain on the top, the source at the bottom. Here, in this case, connected to ground, and you have the the gate, uh, which is pretty much a control voltage in our case. So the gate G. Now, if you want to plot the uh, the current going through the the two main terminals, which is drain source, so this is called ID. So that's your current from drain to source, shown here, against VGS. So VGS, which is the uh, the difference of voltage between the gate and the source. In our case, the source is directly connected to ground, but you could have, of course, a RS here. So in our case, VGS is equal to VG, but, but in general, it's VGS, because here you could have some potential. So if you plot ID versus VGS, you will see that you get a curve like this. So it's not linear. So VGS is always negative. I mean, it can go up to zero, but that's it. But there is like a limit on the downside. So there's a co something called VGS off, and it's called the pin off, pinch pinch off voltage. And once you go past VGS off, ID is zero. So basically, your um, your JFET is completely uh, shut. I mean, not shut. It's basically open. And as VGS goes up from let's say minus five volt to zero then the id goes up exponentially so it's not linear so if you go let's say from minus five volt to minus four volts you'll see that the the difference uh, for the current the difference in the values of id is very small so going this here or going from minus three to minus three you have very small variation of ID, but a large variation of VGS. But as you go closer to zero, like between I don't know, minus two and minus one, you can see that at minus two, this is ID. At minus one, this is ID. So you have now large variations of ID. And it's even worse when you, when you compare minus one and zero. At minus one, you are here. And at zero, you go all the way there. So you have a huge variation in ID for a small variation in VGS. And this is the uh, the maximum. So this is the maximum uh, current that can go through your uh, drain source terminals. And it's called IDSS. Uh, and I believe SS is for uh, shorted source, I believe. But that's your maximum. So what it means basically is that your uh, JFET is uh, pretty much a variable resistor. Okay, so when you are in, when you are in this area, ID is very small. So that means that your resistance is very high or high. 
the resistance is high, but when VGS is, gets closer to zero, then the resistance is very small because ID goes up and up and up until it reaches IDSS. So to say that it's a variable resistor, it would mean that VDS, so the voltage between the drain and the source, is equal to R, so that, that, that resistance, times ID. In other words, the relationship between VDS and IDS is linear. But this is actually true only if VDS is quite small, uh, under 100 millivolts. Okay, so because after that, the behavior is not, the relationship is not linear anymore. The relationship between VDS and IDS is not linear anymore. So it's linear only if VDS is quite small. So the JFET is, uh, can be seen as a viable resistor, but the cool, cool thing about it is, as you can see, VGS controls the value of that resistor. So VGS can be seen as a control voltage, and the JFET or the drain source terminals can be seen as a voltage control resistor. A VCR voltage control resistor and what we're going to do is that we're going to use LT spice to instead instead of VDD we're going to use like a sine wave and then we're going to see the effect of VGS on the uh, on that resistance or more exactly what it's doing to the to the output and that's that's going to tell us that the resistance is changing okay so let's go into LT spice Okay, so we went to LT Spice. So here I have, instead of the VDD I had in the previous slide, here I have a input sine wave, uh, amplitude 10 millivolts. So it's a very small voltage. It goes into a resistor 10K. This is my output, and this is the JFET, with, which is the voltage control resistor. So basically, you have a voltage divider here. So you have R1, R2. And by looking at Vout, you can see how uh, the resistance here of the JFET changes when the uh, control voltage at the gate changes. So here I'm using, this is my gate, so this is my control voltage, the VGS. So X is the VGS, and I'm going to make it uh, go through values between minus 2 and 0 with an increment of 0.5. Uh, yeah, so here I'm putting the formula for the voltage divider, very easy. So V out is equal to V in times RDS divided by R1 plus RDS. So basically the larger V out is, the larger RDS is, and the smaller V out is, the smaller RDS is. You can easily see that because RDS is right there. And RDS is probably much smaller than R1, so you you only need to look at this one. Uh, so this is the voltage control resistor, VCR. J, uh, this is actually the JFET. And RDS is equal to VDS over IDS. So let's run this thing. Okay, so let's look at the uh, VIN. So it's a signal, it's a sine wave centered on 0, plus 10, minus 10. Uh, okay, so let's get rid of it. And now let's look at V out. And here, as you can see, so... This one, the green one, is uh, when uh, VGS is equal to minus 2. So when VGS equal minus 2, RDS is large. Largest. RDS is large. Then the blue one is when VGS is equal to minus 1.5. So now the resistance is going down, and that's why the V out is going down. And then it keeps going down and down. So this is VGS equal minus uh, 1, VGS equal minus 0.5, and VGS equal 0. So when VGS equals 0, the resistance in the JFET RDS is the uh, smallest. Hence, you get, you get the smallest V out. This shows that the resistance in the JFET RDS decreases as VGS goes closer to 0. Okay, so now we're going to talk and see if we can uh, use this idea of a voltage control resistor and end up with a voltage controlled 
variable gain amplifier. The idea is that, okay, so here on the left is a typical inverting op amp amplifier that you probably are very familiar with. Here you have your feedback loop, so RF, and this is the uh, input uh, resistance, and you have the V in here on the, on the inverting input, and the non-inverting non -inverting input is grounded, and this is your output. So this is your typical inverting open that you should know by now by heart. The gain, the gain is minus RF over R in. So the idea, I mean the uh, the genus idea is to replace R in with a voltage control resistor RDS. So meaning the we're gonna use a Jeffet here instead of R in and see if it can control and see if we, if we can actually control the gain of the op amp because here R in is here so if R in can be controlled by that VGS then we have a voltage controlled variable gain amplifier so let's see this if that works in uh, LT space okay so this is the circuit so here you, you recognize the inverting op amp this is the RF the feedback resistor and this is my jfet and as you, as you can see it's replacing r in in the classic inverting op amp amplifier and this is my input so this is just a sine wave so again this is a very small amplitude amplitude sine wave and let's just look at the let's run this thing and look at the output Okay, so let's just look at the input. Okay, nothing to see here. So this is the drain, this is the source, and this acts, this acts as a voltage control, and I make it vary between minus two and zero with increment of 0.5. So let's look at the results. And as you can see, as you can see, it kind of, it kind of works. Okay, so this is the, the oh, what color is this? Magenta. Okay, so let's look, right click. So this is X equals zero. So this is the VGS equals zero. So meaning that the, so the resistance is the lowest, meaning that the gain is gonna be the highest. The next one is minus 0.5. And then you have minus 1, minus 1.5, and this is minus 2. So at minus 2, uh, the resistance is the highest, meaning that the gain is the lowest, and it shows here. So as you can see, it, it kind of works. Uh, this works as a voltage control variable gain amplifier. The only problem is that the the input has to be pretty small in terms of amplitude. So uh, in practice, if you want to use it, you would have to amplify the signal on the way out, meaning that you could introduce some uh, undesired effects like uh, noise and stuff. So I don't know if it's a very practical uh, it's a very practical circuit, but it's just to show that it kind of works. Anyway. I'm going to stop here and I'll see you around.